Listen to the following talk. Experts propose steady expansion of institutional opening up. To promote understanding of the guiding principles from the 20th Central Committee's third plenary session, the 90th China Reform International Forum was held in Heiko, Hainan, on November 2 to 3. This event was jointly hosted by the China Institute for Reform and Development, China Daily, and the China Public Diplomacy Association, focusing on building a high-level socialist market economy. On the morning of November 3rd, attendees discussed strategies for a steadily expanding institutional opening up. The plenary sessions were chaired by Zhou Shuchen, vice chairman of the 13th National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference and executive vice president of the China Human Rights Development Foundation, and Song Xiaowu, chairman of the Academic Committee of the China Economic System Reform Research Association, Zheng Xinli, former deputy director of the Policy Research Office of the CPC Central Committee, highlighted that institutional opening up is essential for building a high-level socialist market economy. Institutional opening up, which includes the adoption of new rules, regulations, standards, and management practices, represents a shift in China's approach to international engagement. It is necessary for reducing trade barriers and establishing a high-standard, open economic system. He emphasized the need to integrate international high-standard free trade agreements into China's economic foundation. Yu Hung Jun, former vice minister of the International Department of the CPC Central Committee, stressed the importance of understanding global trade dynamics to improve international economic cooperation. He urged close monitoring of global economic changes in alignment with higher international trade standards. Yu advocated for broader independent opening up efforts to elevate the quality of China's international economic relationships by building and enhancing free trade zones with global partners. Liu Shijin, Deputy Director of the Economic Committee of the 13th National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference and former Deputy Director of the Development Research Center of the State Council, suggested that institutional opening up could also foster service sector consumption. He proposed greater openness in the service industry, reducing restrictions on cross-border trade in services, and exploring pilot projects such as Hainan Free Trade Port. Wang Zhangmin, former vice president of the National Council for Social Security Fund, pointed out that institutional opening up can be interpreted as a digital shift, particularly relevant in the era of artificial intelligence. He noted that in the digital age, a structure based on zero and one inch holds the potential to rapidly advance productivity. Former Italian Deputy Minister of Economic Development, Michelle Geraci, suggested further expansion of the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, by establishing BRI business, think tank, and exchange platforms. Chong He Li, director of the International Labor Organization's China and Mongolia office, emphasized that global youth employment recovery is currently uneven, requiring a coordinated policy package that includes counter-cyclical fiscal policies, investment strategies, and public service reforms to assist young people entering the workforce in challenging times. Yu Mayant, chairman of the Myanmar Institute of Strategic and International Studies, highlighted that institutional opening up should shift the focus from high growth to high quality growth, stabilizing global supply chains, enhancing economic governance, and harmonizing China's domestic institutional environment with high-standard international trade regulations. Yu Yangding, a member of the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, argued that national security concerns are often used by some countries to ignore established trade rules. He warned that while geopolitical motives may bring short-term gains for certain countries, they could harm all nations in the long run. He advocated for resolving trade disputes within the WTO framework and promoting stronger people-to-people -people exchanges to stabilize major trade relationships. Lu Shangxi, chief expert at the Academy of Fiscal Science, observed that the global risk expectation currently outweighs the return expectation, impacting economic growth. As globalization enters a new phase, he emphasized that positive competition and cooperation are essential.
Huang Kunwei, member of the Economic Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference and researcher at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, recommended promoting higher-level openness to boost productivity. He emphasized the importance of creating a first-class business environment that is market-oriented, legally sound, and globally connected. Jia Qingwo, former dean of the School of International Relations at Peking University, proposed strategies for overcoming challenges in high-tech industries. He suggested investing in foundational research and prioritizing technologies with strong potential to meet national strategic needs. Zhang Yansheng, researcher at the China Center for International Economic Exchanges, listed institutional opening up as a critical factor in overcoming the middle-income trap, improving strategic mutual trust, and pushing forward a new phase of globalization and marketization. Jia Kong, founder of the China Academy of New Supply Side Economics, emphasized the importance of institutional opening up for China's deep-seated reforms and productivity advancement. He recommended that regions like the Hainan Free Trade and the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area take the lead in this effort. Zheng Zhanbin, director of the China Modernization Research Center at the Central Party School, pointed out that both China's modernization and institutional opening up have entered pivotal phases. The goal is to establish a high-level open economic system by 2035. Calibria Jude, professor at Tsinghua University's Schwarzman Scholars Program, noted that Africa, with its young demographic, has unique needs for job creation and economic opportunities, which can be strengthened through enhanced trade relations with China. Soren, the Danish consul general in Guangzhou, reiterated that multilateralism is essential for addressing global crises and fostering peace while cautioning against decoupling and advocating for trust-based dispute resolution. Zhao Jinping, former director of the Foreign Economic Research Department at the Development Research Center of the State Council, observed that service trade is entering a recovery phase globally but faces challenges, such as increased regulatory costs and changing domestic market conditions. He suggested that Hainan Free Trade Port could serve as a pilot for regulatory reform in China's service trade sector. Thorsten Jaranik, European director at the Taehee Institute, noted that China's economy has shifted from efficiency-driven to innovation-driven, necessitating a rebalancing of global economic relationships and more transparent dialogue. Finally, Wang Weiyao, founder of the Center for China and Globalization, stressed that economic stimulation relies on unblocking factors of production, particularly through reforms in rural land use, which could have broad economic impacts. Summary Experts at the 90th China Reform International Forum discussed ways to advance China's institutional opening up to foster a high-level socialist market economy. Key suggestions included aligning with international trade standards, expanding free trade agreements, and enhancing cooperation, particularly through the Belt and Road Initiative. The forum emphasized boosting service sector openness, strengthening high-tech development, and addressing regulatory challenges. Experts noted that institutional reforms would improve productivity, attract foreign investment, and stabilize global supply chains. Participants also stressed the importance of multilateralism, open markets, and building strategic trust with other nations to navigate global economic challenges. This content is just an example for learning English. Thank you for watching. How do you feel about this video? Please leave a comment below.